Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So why would she? Why would she bother doing that? The main reason we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes is the burn rate, right? <laughs> that that if if Mary is in a typical nursing home in our area, she is paying. Uh, kind of in the middle range would be about $12,000 a month in nursing home care. As you all, as you, many of you probably know, uh, once she is on Mass Health, that very same bed that she's sleeping in, and that very same double in that same nursing home, the monthly rate goes down to between six and seven thousand dollars a month. Right? That's the Mass Health rate for that exact same bed. Now remember, Mary's income is $2,500 a month. So if she were on private pay, she'd be paying uh, the $12,000 minus the $2,500. She'd be taking about $9,500 a month out of her savings um, if she was in that bed on private pay. Once she is on Mass Health, although a lien is accruing, right, which is going to have to get paid back, that lien is at the rate is at the amount equal to what Mass Health is paying for that bed. The mass health rate for that bed is $7,000 a month, right? Minus her income of $2,500 a month means her, the amount at which the lien is accruing is $4,500 a month, right? That is a gigantic difference from $9,500 a month. That's a difference of $5,000 a month or $60,000 a year. So if you can position, if Mary can position her assets, so that she is on mass health she is thereby substantially extending the amount of time that those before those assets right would effectively run out thereby leaving her with nothing to give her children right so there is always there is always that reason for, for doing this um, there is a second reason i'm going to talk about um pool trust for a few minutes and i want to get to that part um, by the way i'm sorry that i don't have a clock so tell me, Christine, can you tell me? 5.03. Great, great, great. Um, so what a pool trust is, you, you, there are four or five of them in Massachusetts. They are all nonprofits. Um, they are run for the, for the sake of elderly and disabled poor people. And as a result of all of those things, one of the things they are allowed to do is they are allowed to take funds and pool them with everybody else's funds and invest them for the benefit of the old people and use those funds to supplement whatever that elder needs, whether that elder is in a nursing home or at home. Right? So if you can park money there, what you've done for Mary is you've given her a pot of money which can be used for her benefit for the rest of her life without her having to have spent every dime on nursing home care and then be completely broke. So that every time she's got to try to replace a pair of underwear, one of the kids have got to pay for it. Right? Because she's got nothing, right? She gets that allowance per month in the nursing home, $72 or something, some ridiculous amount, right? So now she has a pool of money that can be used for her. And I'm going to give you one, one example. I remember talking to a, a, this wonderful woman um, who I did one of these presentations, and she said, Well, you know, I've been paying for my mother's nursing home care for like two years, right? But now there's only like $60,000 left. So this wouldn't really be worthwhile doing this, right? I said, Well, of course it would. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, this way you're going to have a pot of money. No matter how much longer your mother, li your mother lives, there's going to be a pot of money really to take care of any of the extras at the nursing home, like a TV or uh, earbuds right? or a, um, a CD player or better furniture, a better bed, the biggest one, a better wheelchair. I always tell people the thing, I, I go to nursing homes a lot, right? a lot of my clients are there. Uh, the thing to me that is the most depressing about a nursing home is when you walk in and you've all, if you've been to the nursing home, right? So you've seen the lady sleeping in the wheelchair, right? And she's like, like this, right? And she's in this wheelchair. Now, one of the main reasons why she's sleeping like that in that wheelchair is the wheelchair, right? 
She's sleeping in typically in a nursing home wheelchair that wasn't made to have her sleep in it. It was made to move people from one room to another, right? So if Mary has money in the D4C, she can buy the great wheelchair, the one that reclines, the one that is motorized if she wants, um, the one that where there's a cup holder. She can, in other words, really improve the quality of her life by parking this money in the D4C, right? Now, the rule, that, so the money can be used for anything. So, th so this lady that I was telling you about, she said, okay, I'm gonna do it. So she did, and we, you know, we put the extra money in. Um, we saved, you know, we were like, by that point, there were like $40,000 left. Um, and then the social worker from the D4C came to see my, cli my client and her mother at the nursing home and just talked to my client because the, the mother at this point was really disabled, right? And so I said, so the lady, and I was there, so the lady said to her, said, so what does your mother like, you know? Does she watch movies or TV? We can get her a new TV, we can get her a flat screen, we can get her whatever she wants. Oh no, she's blind, right? She said, well, does she listen to music? We can get her earbuds, we can do any, any of that. Oh, well, she doesn't hear very well either, she said. Well, is there anything really special? She said, is there any food that she really likes to eat? You know, because we could bring it in, we could have it catered, right? And the lady said, oh, you know, when we were kids, we grew up poor, and when we were kids, once a year, my parents would take us out and we'd go out for lobster. My mother loved lobster. And the social worker said, your mother can have lobster anytime she wants, right? This was like, it was, a, it was, and the mother lived for another three years. And after she died, I spoke to the daughter and she said she had lobster a lot, right? <laughs> during those three years. So anyway, that's what a, that's what a pooled trust is. The other thing that Mary can do um, is, and, and by the way, there's a, we, can, we have a formula that allows us to kind of figure out how, if, if you've got quite a bit of money, how much you want to put into your uh, annuity or how much you want to put into your pooled trust. Another thing that Mary can do is she can take her money and buy an annuity. Well, why would she do that, right? Well, if she buys an annuity um, that, was, that is going to provide a monthly payment that's going to supplement her income to the point where there is no lien, there is no mass health lien, because the total amount being paid to the nursing home is about $7,000. And remember, that's what the mass health rate is. And the lien is only for money that mass health pays to the nursing home. Um, as a result of that, she can probably practically eliminate the lien at death. Now, once again, the, actu the, the annuity has to be for her actuarial life expectancy, which is a little bit longer than Frank's, 6.95 years. But if she can buy that annuity, and through a combination of buying the annuity in order to get rid of the mass health lien, and then taking the rest of the money and putting it into the pooled trust, right, she can immediately qualify for mass health. Now, the, the, once again, if she's only going to be alive for a short period of time, uh, and you kind of know that, then this is, all of these things aren't a great idea. And the reason for that is that if you put the money into a pooled trust, following the death of the old person, the pooled trust also gets to take a percentage of that money, which in the case of most of these pooled trusts, if you die in the first three years, it's 10%. After that, it's 20%. So if you, were if you knew that Mary was only going to be in the nursing home for a short time, then this wouldn't make any sense because the, the penalty being paid to the pooled trust would be greater than the savings as a result of the fact that you're now only paying at the mass health rate. In all other cases, though, if you've got a lot of, if you've got um, substantial assets, but you think that, that Mary could live for, really, I think the cutoff period is more than like a year and a half, or if she's got small amounts of assets so that she doesn't really care that Mass Health is going to end up taking all the money, the point is she's going to have a pool of money for the rest of her life, then this always makes sense. So um, why do it? The funds are available during her lifetime. You're reducing this burn rate. Right, because you're inducing the cost of the nursing home bed from $12,000 to $7,000. Now, one other thing. What about the fact that Mary's over income? Right, remember that? Mary's now got $2,500 in income. She's too high, so she really can't qualify. So if she's at home, she really can't qualify for the frail elder waiver, right? Well, the issue is, the, the, um, among other things, the PCA disregard. If you are over the magic number, $2,164 per month, and you want to qualify for the frail elder waiver, you can still do it, but you have to pay, in that case, a deductible, and which is basically, it gets calculated over a six-month period, but it's basically a monthly deductible. And it's the difference between your income 
and a, and a magic number. If my recollection serves, the magic number is $522. Yes, $522. That's, that's right. That's right. It's also called a spend down. However, however, if when you apply for Mass Health, you also apply for PCA services, the amount of that disregard goes up substantially. Um, the, the, it, and as a result, if you were, in, you have to trust me on the math. Well, don't trust me on the math. Pretend I made these numbers up, but these are pretty close, right? If Mary had $2,500 in monthly income and she did not apply for PCA services, she would end up having to pay a $1,958 uh, monthly deductible before MassHealth would pay for the rest of the home care services in her home. That's a huge deductible, and because and because remember, um, and that's only going to leave her with like six hundred dollars, right, or five hundred twenty-two dollars. And the problem with that is she's still going to try to run her household, right? That doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Um, on the other hand, if she applies for PCA services together with uh, as part of the frail elder waiver application. Um, her deductible goes from $1,900 per month down to $1,200 per month, right? So it may be that as a result of that, it makes sense for her to be applying for the PC, for the uh, for the frail elder waiver. It, hmm, I'm, if, if, I'm assuming that her in, her monthly income is $2,500. In that case, without PCA disregard, her 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 monthly um, payment for for out of pocket, the deductible, right, or the spend down is going to be 1958 with, with PCA services it goes down to 1206 right, there's a gigantic, a gigantic difference. Um, the goal, and I'm going to take questions right now, but the goal of all of the planning that I do is to help people sleep well at night, as I always tell them, um, and that's really what a lot of elder lawyers try to do. Um, as you know, this is all statewide stuff, so if you've ever got any questions, I'd be happy to take any questions. And I'm glad to take, oh, and just one other thing. Um, we also, we're, we're taping this, and we're going to upload this onto our YouTube channel. So if, you're, if you just are dying for something to watch at night, you know, just, you can turn us on anytime, right? Um, and this is an irrelevant slide because we were, we, Frank and Mary had their own team at the Alzheimer's Walk last Sunday. Thank you very much. Questions?